All right, let's, uh, let's do a quick DCP-O-Matic tutorial, um, which uh, I have never had a DCP fail using this free software at dcpomatic.com. Here's the things that I had to learn the hard way. I'm going to share them with you as quickly as I can. So I'm going to go pretty quick. So when you open the interface, this is what you see but you're not going to be able to do anything because you haven't created a job yet. So let's create a job. I'm going to call it sample DCP. Save it to the desktop. If you're in here and you make you can make templates in DCP-O-Matic and if you did and save them, this is where they'd be. As you can see, I made three templates, a uh, short film, a feature, uh, I'm sorry, a, tra a feature from 16.9 material and a trailer from 16.9 material. But let's not do any of those um, because we're going to start from scratch. So you can browse and save this DCP directly to the formatted drive you want. Um, but for today, I'm going to do it to the desktop. So we click OK. Now I've already created that uh, on the desktop because I need to show you something after, so I'll just uh, put a space in there, or a, an underscore in this one so it, it doesn't confuse. All right, so now you've unlocked the program, you've got a job title, and now your first thing you want to do is add the movie file you created, the QuickTime movie uh, with the embedded sound. Um, or if you want to view a DCP that's already been made to, to quality control, check it, or check one you've made and make sure it looks right, you would do add folder. And you'd bring in your DCP that you made, and you can actually check it in here. But we're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to add a movie file, which I have on my desktop, called sample DCP. And I'm going to open it, and now we will see it in here. Now, if you have several DCPs to make, you can load them all in here and uh, create a batch job if you want to. But we're just doing one right now. So the first thing you want to do is uh, deal with the content. And here's the content. Here's a player. You can look at it. This is a trailer I put in here. And uh, <clears throat> if you notice on the screen here, there's uh, black uh, pillar box bars here. That's because my originated material is HD uh, 16.9 and most um, DCPs uh, show at 2K or 4K and the difference between that is right here. Flat is what all DCP, flat is uh, 2K and that's if you notice I toggle it it'll stretch the media out to full 2K dimensions. Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, you have your choice. Uh, I'm going to leave it at 16.9 because that's what it is. And in a movie theater, you'll never see these black bars. And I just err on the uh, side of let's go with the original format so it doesn't look stretched. So your type of DCP will always be 2D. This is if the, this is the, I'm sorry, this is the video con the uh, source content. Always 2D. Then here's a bunch of cropping business. I don't touch. There's a fade in, fade out. I don't touch. This is important. This is the pop-up where you want to make sure that whatever your source material is, that's what this needs to be set at. Uh, unless you want to fool with it and change it. Like if I change this to 235, look, look what happens to it. If I change it to scope, you know, there's, there's full frame, there's academy, it'll go into the, you know, the old 4x3. Uh, but this is 16.9, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm, I'm adding no filters. I don't know. I've never clicked that button. I'm not going to do it now. This is where a lot of people make a mistake. They figure, well, my, my thing is color corrected. I don't need a LUT uh, or a color conversion. But it, it, in fact, you do. Because once I uh, set this to none and my colors came out completely off. So I leave it at Rec. 709. You can see the change isn't much, but somehow it wants it. So keep that at Rec. 709, unless you know what you're doing with this other stuff. Um, 
this is your content video information. This is your aspect and all that stuff. And this is what it's going to end up being jammed into. It's going to pat padded with black to fit a container, a flat container, which is 2K at 185. There's your frame rate. Okay, so that's video. Now let's go to audio. In the audio, if it's a stereo film, you're going to see left and right. If it's a 5.1, you're going to see the center, the subwoofer, the left surround, and the right surround. Uh, if you don't have that, I suppose you can add audio, you know, a separate audio uh, stream to this. I know there, it's a bit above my pay grade, though, so I can't tell you how to do it. But my 5.1 uh, movie export will show up with all, all of these in here. Um, if you uh, if you have a where is the thing oh that's on the DCP side okay this is stereo okay subtitles I have none timing I don't know you know this is like who knows what this is so I leave it alone all right so that that tab is done all right and in here you can play your DCP and look at it or your uh, your movie file. Now we click over here at the DCP tab, and we're going to give we're going to uh, fix these things. Now, the the name in which I created, as you recall, is sample underscore DCP. And if you keep this box checked, it's going to use this this name right here, which is this long technical name. Uh, I uncheck it so my DCP will be in a folder like that. So when the ingests computer looks at it, the server, this is what it's going to see. Uh, that way, if you want to call it, the, put the title of your movie in here, underscore, you know, feature, whatever you want to call it, you, you, got, you got all these characters you can use. Uh, we're looking at a trailer right here, so the content type will be trailer. And that also is for the server somewhere that it can tell what it is, whether it's a feature or trailer. Signed is already by default checked. I don't know why. And then encrypted is unchecked. So unless you have an encryption key that you're giving and locking, I would leave that alone. This is a single reel and the standard is simpty, not interrupt. Okay, now down here, very important. The container is always gonna be flat, always. Every DCP, cinema projector in America runs this. Don't fuck around with these other settings for now. Here's your frame rate. Obviously, that should be the same as your movie. And the resolution is 2K. Unless your movie is a 4K file, leave this at 2K. Now you click the audio and the bandwidth of the JPEG compression. I just leave whatever the default is. The audio here, this is interesting. Most systems don't like stereo. They want to believe everything is 5.1. So when you try to make this stereo and create a DCP, it'll say, hey, there's only two tracks of audio in your, in your thing. Are you sure you want to do that? And of course, the answer is no. So leave this at six channels, 5.1, and instead go down here to this stereo to five one up mixer thing and choose one A or B and it's sort of a fake five one and uh, that's what I do here show audio all that does is it analyzes the audio and tells you if you have peaks uh, and I to be honest never deal with that okay so we've set everything up We've got our content, we have our DCP settings. If we wanted to make a template of this, we would just save as template and it would appear on your startup screen from that point on. So if you like these settings and they work for you, then I would suggest making a template and then you just have to choose that template next time, drop your file in and go. All right, so now we've done everything. That's all you're gonna do here. Now you're gonna go into the jobs, uh, menu and pull down to make DCP and look it already it's telling me it doesn't like the audio level it's high on the center channel you should reduce the gain of your audio well I'm not doing it because this was I like it hot 
So I hit transcode and here's here it goes and and the uh, it'll give me a progress bar and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And when that's done, it'll be solid like this. It it doesn't tell you it's done. It doesn't alert you that it's done. It's really it's really amazingly not informative. So when it's done, uh, I'm going to pause this. Uh, this will be full and then. Now let's go to the desktop and I want to show you the thing that nobody tells you and I had to learn the hard way. So here's the sample DCP. This is, this is the other one I named over here. Let's not pay attention to that. It's one I pre-made to show you what goes on in, in, the, in the folder. So here's the folder we made, right? And we called it sample DCP. Now, what no one tells you, and I figured it out, you open that folder up, you're going to find... Um, a bunch of files and folders that you don't know what the hell they are but look at this right here there's a whole nother folder called sample DCP and guess what that is the folder that you want this other madness in here is absolutely unnecessary so this is what you're gonna burn onto a, a, a drive is this sample DCP uh, it's actually uh, it won't replace itself so without overriding so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this one I'm going to put a space on it so now sample DCP this is all you need for a D for the uh, servers to read in all the theaters there's a a video MXF there's an audio MXF and then a bunch of XMLs and that's it that's what a DCP is. So you pull this out. That's the folder you want. This one is useless. You don't need it anymore. Uh, that's the old one I made. I'm going to get rid of that. So, okay. So here's our DCP. And this is what you burn onto a drive. And uh, I should probably move into that phase next. So stand by and I'm going to show you the how to format a drive and burn your DCP onto uh, a proper drive. We've made our DCP. Here it is, sample DCP. Now we need to format a USB thumb drive, a stick. Has to be 128 gigs uh, uh, big. Or a hard drive, just a simple pocket cheap hard drive, USB hard drive. It has to be USB because that's what these systems take. There's a USB port on all these servers. Not USB-C, but and not even USB 3, believe it or not. Stupid USB 2.0. So you need a special piece of software to format on a Mac to format a drive for Windows NT file system. And that is called NTFS for Mac OS, right here. Just do a Google search, NTFS for Mac. Uh, I don't even know if it's in the App Store, but if it isn't, do a Google search, download it. It might be free, it might be a couple of bucks, I can't remember. But it appears in your system prefs. And once you uh, want to uh, erase a drive, you can do it in two ways. You can go into the system prefs and click on it here. Or you can open your normal disk utility app, which you normally use, and highlight it here. And when you click erase, you will also get, all your, you will get a whole bunch of new choices now uh, that you didn't have before. So I'm going to do it here in uh, Disk Utility because that's what we're used to doing on a Mac. So I'm going to erase this Seagate drive right now. I'm going to format it as Windows NT file system. And this is the one you want to use. Not compressed. I don't know why. Um, some DCP systems want might ask for this extended bullshit, but... That's a whole separate piece of software that I found is useless. So far, I've had no system reject a Windows NT file system hard drive. So we choose that 
we leave master boot record alone. We call your drive, you know, sample DCP, right? And we erase. And it takes a little bit longer than a normal hard drive would take that you would normally do. But when you're using a Mac, um, uh oh, erase process failed. Let's find out why. I think it's because I didn't, I choose the top instead of the bottom. So let's try the bottom again. Windows NT. Sample DCP. Anyway, like I said, it takes longer than uh, a normal hard drive usually takes. Um, this time it worked. But the thing about it is, is it, uh, these systems uh, don't read Mac drives. So this is when, when you're a Mac user and you're using DCP O Matic, this is what you have to uh, do. And I found it to be quite simple. Okay, so now you have a Windows NT, totally DCP compliant hard drive. Right, and now all you want to do is take your sample DCP that you made and copy it over, and it copies and it's done. And depending how large the film is in the DCP, uh, that will take a long time. If it's a feature, it might even take a day. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so that's the end. Uh, uh, then you eject this drive and you put it in a little uh, envelope and you label it carefully outside and on the drive itself and send it off. And keep a copy of this on your hard drive of your film. Uh, and you can always make new DC. You don't even have to make it again. This thing can just be copied and put onto um, Windows NT disks forever and ever. I mean, I've been working off the same DCP on my feature for over a year now, and I just copy it to a thumb drive, and I label it up, and I send it, and I've had no complaints. So that's your tutorial. There's your DCPs. I had to learn the hard way. I did a lot of reading, did a lot of web surfing, and uh, in the help forums, and now this is what I've come to know, and I share it with you. So you're welcome.